One of the most transformational periods in the data center industry is upon us, and that has come in the form of edge computing. Rob Johnson is the CEO of Digital Critical Infrastructure Provider Vertif, and is here to talk more through the edge. Uh, Rob, thanks a lot for talking to me. I'm very excited to be here today. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, could you define the edge to start with? Yeah, so the edge by a lot of people is defined basically as a size or a piece of product, but we really define the edge as, as UK use cases. We've come up with 24 use cases around the edge, and they're categorized around life critical, um, uh, human latency and machine latency and then data intensive. Mm -hmm. So we have those four use cases and within those we, we have um, 24 cases that we kind of follow. So the edge can be as simple as um, HDTV being downloaded. That's probably right. the biggest case in bandwidth consumer on the edge today. Mm -hmm. consumes, consumes about 76% of the IP traffic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Vertify has also come up across with a very interesting uh, definition of edge or actually a a wider concept of how the cloud is going to work with the edge. So mist, fog, mist, edge, fog, and then cloud. Do you want to talk through those four segments? Absolutely. Yeah. So you know, if you if you start you know at the edge mm. and kind of work your way up, because the edge could be anything from a, a base cell tower to a retail store that's doing you know online sales and delivering there. Okay. So that's really kind of your basic edge out there, uh, or it could be a content provider like mm. Netflix. Okay. Uh, as you as you move up, kind of into the mist and file, you you look mm. at kind of like colocation, right? Mm. Colocation is kind of no no longer on prem. It's no longer in the enterprise, but it's, it's so it's not necessarily on the edge, but it's kind of coming mm -hmm. in, and then all the way up to the cloud, right? Okay. So each mm -hmm. segment has kind of its own ability to uh, provide value. If you're going to do lots of computing and so forth, you want to move everything up to the cloud. Uh, but with a lot of data and bandwidth, it's costly. Mm -hmm. So some of that computing has to take place mm -hmm. on the edge. Okay. And when it comes to edge infrastructure, where are the main challenges today, and where is the risk? Yeah. So edge in infrastructure could be very expensive. So you need to have the real estate where the bandwidth is, um, the capability of being able to get, get connected and be able to deliver stuff to the mm -hmm. cloud. Um, today, right now, you see edge, you know, mm -hmm. who's going to pay for it? Okay. You know, when it comes to 5G, who's going to mm -hmm. put all of that infrastructure out there? Mm -hmm. How is that going to be paid for? How is it going to be used? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be in a co-location model? Are individual telecom companies okay. going to do it? It's still undecided on how that's mm -hmm. going to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then when it comes to the go-to-market strategy from Vertiv, how are you selling the edge to the world? Yeah, so uh, we've been doing edge, you know, unbeknownst to a lot of people for about the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. We've been in the telecom industry side doing cell towers and so forth, so we consider that the edge mm -hmm. part of it today. We're taking that knowledge that we have today and begin to be the thought leader on the mm -hmm. edge space. So okay. what, we, what, I, what I mean by that is we're beginning to define where the edge uh, ends and begins, the use cases. Um, mm -hmm. In the past, it's been really focused on size of, 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 of data center or whatever, and that's the edge, but mm -hmm. we believe it boils down to the use cases and the workloads. And mm -hmm. so we think we'll take a thought leadership position mm -hmm. in helping mm -hmm. define that for everyone. Mm -hmm. What's the edge use case I guess you're most excited about? Um, you know, ultimately autonomous vehicles, because okay. autonomous <laughs> vehicles, of course, and everyone's excited mm -hmm. about that, are going to require a lot of compute power mm -hmm. on the edge. You know, just the they'll latency. be an edge computer themselves. They'll be an edge computer themselves. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, but they can't do it all. You can't put this, mm -hmm. uh, enough power into the car, so the car is going to have to communicate with 5G, and you're going to have to have little data centers mm -hmm. every mile or every two mm -hmm. miles in order for that to work. Okay. And beyond edge, what other trends are keeping you uh, on your toes? So, uh, Colo and Hyperscale, the growth okay. and expansion of Colo mm -hmm. and Hyperscale mm -hmm. on a global basis mm -hmm. is, is a significant growth factor. Okay. But I guess another one for us too is the enterprise, everyone thinks the enterprise is going to shrink overnight. Um, we're helping the enterprise move to the cloud, mm -hmm. shrink their data center set, build new data centers and right size mm -hmm. those. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what new products or services and features is Vertic preparing to launch, say in the next one year for example? Yeah, so if you look at the things we're mainly focused mm -hmm. on is additional services for mm -hmm. our customers. I mean, okay. our Colo and Hyperscale customers want predictive failure analysis. Mm -hmm. They don't want preventive maintenance, okay. which yeah. is typical of what's been done. So a lot of work around software, around using AI, machine mm -hmm. learning, uh, data scientists to be able to predict when the pr mm -hmm. equipment's going to fail and then be there to fix it when it happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's your view on the introduction of, for example, nanotechnology and robotics and completely dehumanizing the data center, taking humans out completely? Well, I think what you're going to see mm -hmm. over the next nine to 10 years, mm -hmm. and we kind of studied this, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that happening across the mm -hmm. board. Take, for example, okay. McDonald's, right? Mm -hmm. McDonald's today maybe employs 20 people, mm -hmm. um, and they do that you know, seven by 24. Mm -hmm. um, now you go to robots doing a lot of things, mm -hmm. a lot of kiosks where you type in your own menu. You're going to see a lot of jobs displaced over the next three, four, five, six, seven years as robotics and stuff come in. We have to figure out what to do with those workers. Where are they going to go? What's their job? How are we going to retrain them? Because mm -hmm. no doubt in my mind, you know, that's going to happen. I was in Singapore uh, three or four weeks ago. I ordered my meal and 
a robot brought, to robot you. brought me my meal. I've never seen this before mm -hmm. in my life. It's fascinating. You no longer have to tip somebody. Your, your meal comes there quickly on time. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing asks you how satisfied you are, and then it goes on down the hallway. Um, that is kind of the future, and we have to figure out what we're going to do with the population, what they're going to do for work. Okay, uh, one final question. Data Cloud 2018, um, 12 months to go for Data Cloud 2019. What's the question that you have today that you want to see answered by next year? I, I really want to understand the 5G rollout, right? Okay. What does 5G really mean? Where is it going to get rolled out? And what's the impact? Who's going to pay for it? And the pace mm -hmm. in which that goes? Because that is going to change the world when it happens. But I think it's going to take time. And I'd like to have better clarity from the telecoms mm -hmm. on how they're going to roll out 5G. Mm -hmm. Okay, Rob, thanks a lot for talking to me. Uh, don't forget you can follow Data Economy on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And also visit the website on www.data-economy.com.